Good evening, listeners. I am Stahamili Mapp, and I'm here speaking with Sasha Alexander, the co-founder of Black Trans Media. Welcome to Out FM, Sasha. Thank you so much, Stahamili. I'm so excited to be here with you. Yeah, yeah. So why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourself in terms of who you are, and then we'll talk a little bit about your organization. Sure. Um, well, as Stahamili said, I'm Sasha Alexander. I am the founder and co-director of Black Trans Media, and I use the pronouns she and he and they and insist that you mix it up or use my name. Oh, that's so cool. Uh -huh. um, we're going to talk a bit about your organization. It's quite an important organization here in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and, and to that end, I read a bit about your um, about it on your Facebook page. So let me just make that statement that I re read and then ask you if that kind of conforms to your organization's mission statement, and then we can talk a little bit about what you do. So it says on your Facebook page that Black Trans Media is a Black trans-led organization based out of Brooklyn, New York, existing to shift and reframe the values and worth of all trans people by addressing the intersections of race and transphobia. So is that a fair, estimate of what your organization's mission is or do you have more to say? Yeah, I mean, you know, I would just say, yeah, we're a black trans and gender non-conforming led project led by and for our folks. We are intergenerational um, and have a lot of youth leadership. We are based here in Brooklyn and use art, media, political education and organizing to address racism and transphobia, as you said. And maybe the one other thing I would add is uh, one of the things we always say is we are committed to shifting and reframing the value and worth of Black trans people everywhere um, using media as an organizing tool. Um, so that's probably the last, just the last thing I would say, but. I'm glad you added that last part about using media as a, as a tool, because of course that's part of your title and something I wanted to be clear about how you use that and how you manipulate that. Um, so regarding that work and all of those interests, that's a, that's a lot to bite off. That's a lot to bite off, Sasha. It, it is. It is. I, I won't lie. Uh, you know, a lot of us, when we start something, it does that thing where it just grows and grows and grows. And especially in a lot of our communities where there's a lot of need, you know, and uh, a lot of excitement and interest in the community and not a lot of entry into a lot of other spaces, which I know we'll get into, but this is part of why, you know, I founded the project, why we do this work is as black trans folks, you know, there's a lot of spaces where we might be able to be black and exist and do our work, but we're not accepted as trans and gender non-conforming folks and folks who are part of the LGBT community, right? And then we might also then similarly be in LGBT spaces, right? Or trans specific spaces where there's anti-blackness, right? And we have to experience this, right? Duality, this intersectionality that there's not a lot of room for. And so part of why I founded the project and why there are, it resonates with so many other black trans people is is because there hasn't necessarily always been a political home, which is really what we've been trying to create through our work, which is very different than just creating media and telling stories. You know, It's about like a long-term investment in the people whose stories we're telling and building power for our communities who certainly um, you know, have a lot of barriers against them. So um, I'm definitely always, yeah, oh. go ahead. So I was going to say, so so what are some of the projects you're currently involved in? Um, yeah, so some of the things oh. we're, yeah, go ahead, sorry. No, I was just going to say towards those goals. Yeah, 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 I was going to say, you know, these, sorry, these Zoom, Zoom delays in our digital COVID world, but some of the things, uh, the current projects have been, well, existing framework. So part of our narrative shift work is about uh, shifting the way people talk about Black trans people. So everything from uh, in the media and news, people misgendering, or uh, the ways people talk about trans people, trans people of color, uh, the violence against black trans women, and making sure we're not just saying violence against trans women or trans women of color, but here in the US specifically, violence against black women, black trans women, right? And um, creating a, a platform and a space where we can not only tell stories about what's going on in our community, but be developing strategy and organizing. And so um, some of that work has looked like some of our work around space, 
uh, you know, when we founded the project, we were organizing out of our living rooms and kitchens. And, you know, through that time, we've gone through uh, evictions and gentrification. And a lot of our folks uh, have come through and are currently in shelter, are, you know, on, on the streets or are home or houseless, right? Or are, you know, in living situations um, that are not sustainable. And so at one point, one of the things we realized is we needed to go from just telling stories and interviews with Black trans people about their experience in space, public space, private space, housing, right, to actually creating sustainable space. Because as storytellers, as media makers, uh, if we don't have a place to hold those stories and to tell those stories, um, those stories get lost. Um, and those stories are not there uh, for our communities. And so, you know, when we say media also, you know, Originally, we started out, which is part of my background in filmmaking, interviewing people, you know, using a camera, using audio, interviewing Black TGNC leaders all over the country and here in New York City. And that work has really grown across mediums. We've done a really amazing mural. Uh, Marsha P is like the, the central figure, but like honors other Black trans women and folks in New York City and, and uh, is hopefully like it's exciting. We're still working on where that's going to be publicly. But we did a really awesome public mural in the Bronx over the summer, a Black Trans Lives Matter uh, mural. We do like political education. Like this last summer, we did Black August programming and um, did like ritual and media making, storytelling, um, all sorts of workshops. And then uh, media making, you know, about storytelling. Like in the beginning of COVID, we did a lot of work um, working with Black trans people around telling the story about what it was like, you know, when the pandemic first hit them. And um, really uh, all of that stuff had led us to open up a, a physical space. And uh, ironically, we signed a lease March 1st before we knew the pandemic was gonna be such a big deal in Bed-Stuy in the neighborhood where um, Olympia, who's the co-director of Black Trans Media, where she grew up. And it's one of the only Black trans specific spaces that exist in the world. Um, and certainly here in New York City, uh, it's the only, physical space that is dedicated to Black trans people and uh, Black trans people making art and media and organizing. And so it's a really powerful thing that we did, um, but we had no idea we were on like the edge of this moment in the world where we weren't gonna be able to use that space the same way. And so, I mean, the last thing I'll just say was like, we were able to use that space and move like thousands uh, and thousands of plates of food to folks across New York City. We were able to do like some programming, you know, that was COVID safe. We did a lot of virtual programming um, and we still tried to like harness that energy of being that political home um, for black TGNC folks and our broader communities because we have, you know, broader communities that we love and care for and are part of our world. And, and that certainly took up a lot of time and energy I'll say away from just making media, um, but it gets back to that part about, um, our values, which are, are, you know, are really rooted in, in caring about like whole people and loving black trans people. And that means not just caring about telling a story, but like the person who's telling the story and making sure the injustices or things that they're talking about are things that we're also helping work on and address and not just tell a story to tell it. So um, that's some of the stuff we've been doing. And I'm, and, and some of the other stuff that I didn't mention in the past that was really exciting is like we did the first and only black trans film festival oh, um, cool. like highlighting producers and creators and and other things like that and um and we have a lot of really exciting things that are cooking up for next year so i'm excited to i think in this next uh little bit talk about some of that stuff but certainly just a lot of political education leadership development and just um being a space and a network for black trans folks who are um, abolitionists who are feminists, who are political, who are really like searching for ways to be using these tools that um, all use, I mean, a lot of us use in our lives today, um, but to be intentional strategic um, together about that. So um, yeah, it's been a really beautiful world to like, be part of among all the really challenging things. Like we've also done a lot of vigils and like we speak at a lot of rallies because of how many Black trans women and Black trans men and non-binary people have been, you know, killed and attacked. And 
Um, and so part of our work is telling that narrative, but not um, being consumed in that narrative and really thinking about how to sustain in our future for our folks. That's good. That's good. Um, and this is Al FM on WBAI, and we're talking to Sasha Alexander of the Black Trans Media Organization um, based out of Brooklyn, New York. Well, actually, now you have the location of space in, in Bed-Stuy, a little bit more specific. Um, that's great, Sasha. I'm Stahamili Hamili Knapp. And uh, Sasha, let's continue to, to have a conversation about some of the things you're interested in pursuing in the, in the uh, future, the near future, and maybe the further future at, at, uh, with your organization. Yeah, no, there's a lot of exciting things that our team and our folks are cooking up. And I mean, as a media maker and a storyteller, I'm just excited to have this physical space where we can be, people can be editing and people can be skilling up and, and we can literally just create as many narratives as we can um, created by black trans folks themselves, right? Um, but the other thing in the long term, like you're saying is, you know, we live here in New York City where renting is, um, I mean, the cost of is just outrageous. At the least, for anybody who has a business is also pretty outrageous. The idea that long we need a space to nourish Black trans media makers, like, is just clear to us. So, like, people's housing is just, um, I mean, like, you know, like, it's just literally death for people. And so... We've just been thinking, what does it mean to secure space long-term for Black trans folks in our communities to tell, tell stories and to thrive and to live and for that to be part of our work. So, and so we're spending- The situation for trans folks, I understand. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, for all folks obviously in the city, but because of the discrimination and harassment trans folks experience in whether it's a shelter or a tenant, how, you know, neighborhood harassment, um, you know, all sorts of different programs and spaces. It's a real issue. And, and even though there's like a real movement and there's some people who are really like kind of hip to the fact that black trans people experience that, there are a lot of people who like continue to do really harmful things. And, and I don't necessarily always think people are so aware that those things are that way. But I think also that's part of the work we're moving into now that we're neighborhood based we are building relationships in, in Bed-Stuy there where we are with like black cis folks, right? Who are there and, you know, there's a lot of work to do around our dynamics with each other. You know, as black TGNC people, we experience harm from black cis people. Um, we experience harm, you know, from our families and our communities. And, you know, that's some of the work that we want to be able to move into by being neighborhood based. We've already, had people, there was one guy in the neighborhood who sit, sits out on the bench in front of our space and told us that one night he was out there, somebody was talking about what is this black trans stuff, you know, this, you know, maybe this shouldn't be here kind of thing. And this guy, you know, he stood up for us and he was like, no, this is exactly what should be here. And, you know, and it turned out he was a formerly incarcerated brother. He was, you know, he was really brilliant and schooled that person in that moment and he had our back and you know you'd never know that that person might have your back in a neighborhood but like building power and community there is something we're really excited to do um, also we're looking at like long-term land and supporting projects on the land there's some like really awesome stuff happening um, a black trans woman named Kyan uh, Dorisho who founded Glitz um, just got a building the first building ever dedicated to LGBT people coming home from prison and jail, and she's a trans woman. So it's the first building for our community, like run and owned by a, a trans woman, a black trans woman who's a formerly incarcerated sex worker. And she bought this building in Queens after raising over a million dollars following the Brooklyn Liberation March for black trans folks. And similarly in the South, I was just messaging one of our sisters, Kayla Gore, who works with our sisters, uh, keep our, our sisters keepers and she is doing this tiny house project they're building tiny houses on the land and they broke ground and they're building them and for the long run you know for black trans media like we think about what it means to not only like document and tell the story of of black trans people and black folks on this land and what's happening to us but also to be part of skilling up folks getting onto the land as we tell those stories and 
figuring out, can we be a part of like creating long-term space for folks outside of the city? Um, so that's like, that's like a much bigger, bigger, bigger picture thing of what we're doing. But this year we're really focused on our strategic direction. We're really focused on like, what are our new strategies of how we're using media, of how we're working with communities, how we're using this political space that we physically have this year and what is the plan, you know, for the future. And um, I'm really excited because part of that is launching a new membership structure and, and opening up our space as we safely can. It was really hard to be closed all last year. And also we know our communities are like really hard hit by COVID and we take it really seriously, like not, uh, I don't know, not be cavalier about that. Like, you know, really respecting, like we've lost a lot of people. So we're really excited. We got some new things we're gonna be rolling out. And um, I know in a moment, I'm gonna get to be able to tell people where they can follow us and where they can find us. Um, and I'm sure if it wasn't COVID, I'd be like, you see us out in the streets, you'll see us at this workshop, you'll see us at this event. We're still virtual and we still are out there and we're out there mobilizing um, throughout the last year. We've definitely stopped a lot of that because of our folks' safety and because of really wanting to take care of Black trans people, of Black folks, like in the last year of what we've gone through. Um, but we certainly like love to connect with other folks, build with other folks um, and we're here doing our black trans everything work. Um, so maybe I will tell people where they can follow us and find us. Yeah, yeah, black trans everything. I love that terminology, that's great. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah I, 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 you know, the segment's coming to an end and um, of course it's never enough time to get into a full deep conversation with folks. So of course we, we're gonna have to have you back, Sasha. Um, to talk a little bit further about the things you're doing and interesting, interested in and how that space develops in Bed-Stuy. Um, and I would encourage people to go to, to the Facebook page and your other pages to see some of the videos and films you have on, on online for people to look at. I think that's really important. But go ahead and give your, let's, let's get your um, coordinates. Sure, people yeah. Can people can definitely like YouTube and watch our videos. If you type in Black Trans Media on Google, you'll have anything come up, but you can www.blacktransmedia.org. We have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have Twitter. You can email us, um, which is probably the best way these days at blacktransmedia at gmail.com. And we will be announcing our uh, events and things like that on those platforms. So if you're interested to like actually attend um, any of our virtual programming, like Saturdays, we do a social support space every Saturday for Black trans folks. Once a month, we do a digital open mic, you know, for artists and creatives, PE, political education, other things. Follow us, message us. Um, we would love to connect and build with you. And, um, and if you want to donate to us, we are a fiscally sponsored organization of Alliance for Global Justice, which um, if you want that information, you can go to any of those channels and it's posted. Um, but your donation is tax deductible, or you can always do that cash app, Venmo, PayPal, Black Trans Media. And um, we appreciate folks just listening and supporting our work and supporting our communities. And certainly appreciate you, Staha Mili, um, for inviting myself and, and Black Trans Media to be here. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sasha. Um, a phone number at all? Um, the phone number is 929 Eight two four one six zero. Okay, Sasha, that's great. Thank you. So thank you so much for your time. I know your time is precious. You have a lot going on. I appreciate you. I appreciate your work. And so this is Out FM. I'm Staha Millie Mapp, and we've been talking with Sasha Alexander from Black Trans Media and everything and everybody, right? Black trans yeah, you had it, Black Trans Media. Good. Thank you so much, Ad FM. Appreciate you, Stahamili. We appreciate you, Sasha. Thank you.